Hello, hello, people. This is Ali Rush again. And I have a short, quick, well, it may not be too quick or too short, but either way, it's, it's for you. And maybe it'll help you from the inside out. Oftentimes we look at a person's outside and we judge that person by what's on the outside, never really knowing what's on the inside. So today I, I would like to stimulate you and your mind to look further than a person's outward appearance to see the real problem that is being harbored inside that person. So we thought we would come to you from the title or subject of Mind Medicine and Coping with the Virus, Opening Your Eyes. Mind Medicine and Coping with the Virus, Opening Your Eyes. Nobody consoles the mental aspects of a person. Nobody soothes the mind of a person who's, when I, when I say mentally disturbed, I'm not talking anything uh, negative, but I'm saying, uh, speaking in the aspect of shortcoming. But this pandemic brings on serious mental shortcoming. And if you would allow it to, it would drive you to the brink of crazy. Because there's so much death around, so much problems that are arising, so much problems that we are facing now, and so many problems that we will have to face in the future. And we have to prepare ourselves mentally to deal with and handle these problems. We have all got to stand up and be more of men and more of women. We have to reach inside and pull out that extra mental aspect of a man or a woman. So I say this, what if thoughts lingered and bounced off trees until someone came along with an absorbent mind and intercepted your thoughts accidentally? They traveled the winds. When thoughts are intercepted by someone, it causes inquisitive feelings and arouses questions just below the mind's eye. We then seek answers to questions. Why is that person thinking that way? What are they thinking? We become investigating, investigative and analytic when we see evidence of a con of a thought concealed in the mind of another. Negative thoughts repel. Positive thoughts attract. Thoughts are conveyed in spoken or unspoken terms. Oft times we don't have to think concerning the thinking process because according to Christ himself, he says, today you hear my voice, harden not your heart. This gives much credence to the fact that the heart in man is a receiver of mental urgings. Let's make that a little more plain or plainer and say mind stimulating. What travels from the heart is received by the heart of another. It's like the blowing wind. You can feel the wind caressing your face. How do you know it's the wind? Well, how does one contradict the blowing of the wind. 
How does one deny the love one feels in their heart? <clears throat> you cannot be because what flows from the heart generally flows or travels. Not necessarily when would, but messages can be sent with eye contact or a quiet moment of yes. Sometimes disagreement is started without words. Agreement is realized with just a simple nod of the head, a clasping of hands, or exiting a specific area with no given answer at all. What makes the thought real? Now, I'm, 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 I'm pressing you, pushing you toward the fact that there are those around you who are suffering mentally from what they are going through now. When is it not a thought? And the answer, only when it is acted upon. What happens with the rejected thought? Do you simply throw it out mentally or leave it to be acted upon another day? You might say that you didn't know. <clears throat> But what I do know is that I have you thinking now. It may be deeper than you've thought before. You know what I call this? Mind medicine. The only way to tend the mind is to stimulate it with an inner middle, mental arousal that takes you into the inner sanctum of knowing. The body can be cured in some ways by using a process of believing you can touch with feeling the thoughts of another. Just convince them that the situation is not as bad as, bad as it seems. We see it and we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now let's play a little mind game. How do you know the sun is shining? How do you tell when you are wet? How do you know when you are sick? Each one of these questions has the same answer. Your mind told you so. Can a positive mind detract from a physical illness? Which one is superior, the mind or the body? Which one is in control? I do believe you would say the mind because one would think the body goes where the mind tells it. If this is true, why can't we tell the body to rid itself of sickness. Why can't we simply deny a certain situation, believe it and become better for it? The mind is a mental, unseen, integral part of being. The body is a physical faction. We can recognize areas of the body. We do not know and are not fully acquainted with mental factions, but we can continue to seek ways of allowing the mind more moral, directive, and definite insight into the whys and why nots of situations. Let's think of, when we think of our fellow man, let's think of him in more terms than just a physical being because there are mental aspects of any given situation that causes one to strive. And when you see your fellow man striving, you should want to give him or her comfort and assistance we got to learn to walk with one another, even in our problems. Sometimes we must let another's problems become our problems because sometimes a problem is too big for just one person. He needs or she needs someone just a little bit stronger to help them out of that situation. That's it. God bless you. Hope to see you again soon.